All right, John here, welcome. In this video, we're gonna talk about what I pack for a minimalist travel photography setup. So I've traveled quite a bit less, um, I don't know, five or six years, and I like to travel very lightly with just one bag. I don't like to check baggage, but that becomes problematic with photography because as you know, when you wanna take photographs, it tends to involve a lot of gear. So I have my kit kind of narrowed down to not too many items now, and I thought I would just make a video and go over what I carry, and hopefully you'll find that useful. So let's just get started. The first thing is this strap by Peak Designs. I think this is the leash strap. They make a couple of different ones. They all look really nice. The nice thing about this is it's super easy to adjust, and they're very comfortable. They're high quality. There's a million different camera straps out there, but I like this one because it packs down really small, and it's strong and it's easy to attach to the camera and take off the camera it's just a good strap overall so that's my choice on that front i don't use it all the time i will often just carry my camera without a strap but it is really nice to be able to kind of sling the camera over your side or over your front when you're not using it so you don't have to take it in and out of a bag all the time the next item would be this little tripod this was just a cheap buy off of Amazon. It's, I guess it's called the Ultrapod. Maybe the name has changed now, I don't really know. It's just plastic. It's not, I don't know, particularly special in any way or form, but the nice thing is it's incredibly light and it's incredibly small. So I don't like tripods. I don't like using them. I use them as little as possible, but sometimes when you're traveling, especially you just, you have a shot that you want to get that you need a tripod for and carrying around a massive tripod is, just not a thing that I'm interested in doing. So this works great. I can set it up on a table or there's always some kind of bench or wall or something you can put a camera on. And if you can't, you just put it on the ground and sometimes those low shots are really interesting. It will support my camera pretty well. If I put a really big lens on there, it can get a little bit dicey, but I've used this thing quite a bit and I've been pretty happy with it. The next item is this little case. Um, it's like a it's like a wrap for your for your camera it's um it just comes in like a, a sheet and then it's got these velcro pieces and then you can put your camera inside of this thing and i like it because it i can if i put a small lens on my camera i can just slide the whole thing in there it protects the camera really well in my bag i don't need a bunch of fancy dividers and i don't need a special camera bag it just just does a really good job for me and doesn't take up too much space which again is kind of a big deal for me. Moving on to storage, I just made a video about this recently. Um, figuring out how to store your photos and video while you're traveling is a little bit tricky, but I've settled on this. It's this kind of hard case book, if you will, full of SD cards, and I use my camera to shoot and store images and video on both cards at the same time, so then I have a backup right away. I put them all in here, and that's it. That's just where I keep all the photos till I get home. And that will last me for a pretty long trip. I can travel for probably up to two months or so without filling all of that room up. If I were to go longer than that, then I don't know what I would do. I guess <laughs> figure it out when you get there. All right, let's talk about lenses. So I only usually bring just one single lens and then I choose which lens I want sort of for the trip. I find that that limitation is perfectly reasonable. It's an enjoyable way to shoot. I don't, I don't like changing lenses a lot. I don't like having to think about which lens I want to use. I would prefer to just deal with the creative limitations of having one lens on my camera. So I'll go over the ones that I use. The most frequent um, travel lens that I have is this 27 millimeter. Is that what it is? Yeah, 27 millimeter, 2.8. It's a Fujifilm lens and it's a pancake lens. So it's, it's very small. And honestly, the nice thing about this is it just makes the camera really inconspicuous. It doesn't really stand out. People don't really, you know, view you as a photographer or whatever. Uh, it's tiny. If it's in the bag, it's super light. It's a great focal length. It's wide enough. You can back up and get some good shots. You can get close into things and get some good shots. 2.8 is not super fast, but on the X-T4, which is what I shoot with, um, I have image stabilization, so you can get away with some nice stuff. It's not not the best, but it, it works okay. So yeah, that's that's the staple right there. I use that I use that lens a lot um, for traveling. The next in the list would be the 35 millimeter 35 millimeter 
f2 and i love the rendition of this lens i love the focal length um super sharp super crisp just a, a generally great lens it's a little bit narrow sometimes you feel a little bit frustrated with that because it's more of like a 50 millimeter feel of view if you're talking full full frame equivalent but still very happy with this lens and i will often take that if i'm you know i i gravitate a little bit more towards the 35 millimeter than the 27 it's just a little bit narrower and a little bit closer in and i kind of like that and the f2 is nice to have as well and you can get this is a still incredibly versatile lens if you want to go wide you can often do like a pano you can shoot multiple images and stitch them together and that will kind of help you get away with a little more with that one and then lastly the uh 16 to 80 f4 this is and i have a very uh this is a love-hate relationship with this lens it's a great lens it's pretty sharp it's not quite as good at 80 um as it is at the middle range and also 16 millimeter f4 is not super fast but it's incredibly versatile you can just shoot a lot of stuff with that lens and so it's a really good travel lens the thing about it is you know f4 is not super fast so that is a bit of a limitation i have to say and it's heavy so i don't love to take that on trips because it weighs so much and i kind of I kind of prefer to shoot prime lenses anyway. It's sort of more my my kind of thing. So I do take that, but it, if I'm going, like when I went to Iceland, I took this lens because I knew I was gonna be in situations where I was stuck on a road and I couldn't get closer to things. There were gonna be big landscapes. I wanted huge shots and I felt like I was gonna be really limited with kind of some other choices that I have. So you kind of got to pick and choose based on the trip. All right, and then the last item, is the camera. This is the Fujifilm X-T4. I've owned this for about two years, one and a half, something like that. Now, honestly, I mostly upgraded for the IBIS. Having the stabilization in the camera is really nice, especially when you're traveling. Um, it's good for video too, and I'm really happy with that camera. It's The size is good, it fits good in my hand, and I mean, we could go on and on about Fujifilm, which I won't do, but that's my camera of choice right now, and it, it's a, it's just kind of a good all-around camera. It does a lot of things well for traveling, and so I've been very happy with that. Also, the, the color on the JPEGs and the video, the footage and stuff you get right off the camera is fantastic. So, that's it. That's what I bring. Um, it takes up a very small portion of uh, also very small bag, and I have gone quite a few places with that setup so thank you so much for watching i hope that was helpful to you as always if you want to or you feel compelled leave a comment down below about what you take with you when you travel do you take a whole separate bag a bunch of stuff or just a few things and we'll see you in the next video